All right, everyone, we're going to start today's presentation. And I want to thank everyone for taking the time uh, to join the print audit presentation on seat based billing for managed print. A uh, little background um, and housekeeping. Uh, we will um, be answering questions at the end of the presentation. So if you can look uh, for the questions uh, section in your dashboard, you can actually input your questions there as we move through the presentation. And Angela Onstein from our marketing group is going to be uh, raising the questions at the end of the session. My name is Wes McDonald. For those that don't know me, I've been in the managed print services space now for about 14 years. And when I got started uh, in the early days of managed print, uh, there wasn't really any software uh, for monitoring uh, disparate devices other than, you know, that was made by the OEMs as well. Um, this whole idea of cost per page for uh, managed print was a brand new idea. It had been ongoing for some time in the copier space, but um, was introduced into the printer space to try and help uh, deal with the problem of uh, price competition on the cartridges. And that was a long time ago. And obviously, as the managed print uh, market continues to evolve, um, that there are other options for how we can actually uh, bill managed print services to our customers. And today, we're going to look at seat-based billing for managed print. What we'll do as we move through the agenda, uh, why seat-based billing? In other words, uh, is cost per page still the best way to do things, uh, or is there a need to do things in a different way? Um, section 2, risk factors. Uh, we actually, at the Navigator event for Fotizo, uh, did a roundtable with a lot of dealers and industry experts in the managed print space asking about some of the risk factors that they you know, sort of perceived with seat-based billing, and we've documented those and come up with some solutions. Uh, we're also going to look at the required tool sets. Uh, obviously, as we start to bill per seat uh, per user, uh, we have to move beyond just the physical device itself and the metrics we gather from it and start looking at what users are doing. And section four, we're going to look at how to make sure that a seat-based uh, billing platform is profitable, and then conclusions and questions at the end of the session. Now, the first thing uh, that we should probably get to is what is seat-based billing? And I've come up with this definition. I actually went online and looked up uh, what the definition was for seat-based billing in the managed services and managed IT services world and modified it for managed print. So basically, seat-based billing, or SBB for managed print, is a flat fee which is billed per end user per month and covers support for all print-enabled devices used by each end user. This could entail supporting locally connected printers, desktop printers, multifunction devices, scanners, fax machines, and all related consumables, service, parts, and software. So it's a bit of a mouthful, but you know the idea being that um, a seat-based price includes everything uh, per user uh, for their print. So what's wrong with cost per page? Um, I've had the opportunity over the last six years to do a lot of assessments and work with a lot of uh, dealers in my other business, Focus MPS. And what I've seen time and time again is that in the last few years, we've seen um, a rapid increase in uh, margin pressures. And usually, uh, that's coming because of increased competition for pages. There was a time when uh, offering cost per page and managed print services was a unique you know, kind of identifier for you as a dealership. And certainly, those days are behind us. Uh, most customers that I've done assessments for are getting three, four, five you know, different quotes from providers uh, for managed print services based on uh, pages. The other thing that we're, we're seeing, which is unique uh, kind of in the last three to five years, is declining pages. And yes, there are arguments uh, that, there are, uh, that pages are not in decline, um, that per device or you know, per customer that they're actually on the, on the increase. But um, I'll show you some numbers uh, to try and demystify where some of those uh, contentious arguments come from, and that the, um, the, the, the modern view of what's happening with pages across the board for most uh, people that provide information on this is that there is a slow and steady decline. So why seat-based billing? <clears throat> Another thing that we have to look at is alignment with our customers. And currently in the managed print services space, um, we do have mixed signals. One of them is that obviously as a dealer, uh, under a cost per page contract, you want the customer to print more pages. And in particular, you want them to print more color pages. And on the other side of the coin uh, is the customer that we're actually there to serve, and they want to print fewer pages. In other words, 
They want to see less waste. They want to see less abandoned documents around their devices. They want to make sure that they're printing uh, only when necessary and that it's as streamlined as, as possible. So our current billing model, especially as uh, pages start to decline per user, uh, are in conflict with our actual business model, and that represents a pretty big problem. According to Fotizo, and I've looked at uh, statistics from other groups as well uh, that kind of mirror uh, what they're showing here, is that as page volumes continue to decline, uh, the worldwide media outlook remains bleak, and that shipments of laser and desktop inkjet media will decline at 1.8% compound annual growth rate. And, you know, um, I had a debate actually with um, another uh, gentleman at one of the conferences, and he said, yeah, well, you know, it's a, you know, it's a slow burn. And my response back was, well, it's still a fire, and we've got to learn how to deal with it. So that's the optimistic view, is that it is 1.8%, so 2% or, you know, less for uh, decreases. But as we've seen, in other industries, uh, what if there's the potential for a Kodak moment? In the old days, that was, you know, a, a good thing. It captured some family memories. But obviously, as we saw what happened to Kodak, they didn't respond quickly enough to the changes that were happening in the marketplace uh, related to uh, digital photography. And uh, as we all know, they filed for bankruptcy and uh, have uh, survived that, but are certainly a much different company than they were uh, in their glory days. So according to Potizo as well, as if you look at this number here, what's interesting as we see the shipments go down um, is that there is a slow and steady decline in what's happening projected to uh, 2018. And again, a slow burn, but that's something that we've got to look at, you know, being able to deal with. The other reason that I like um, seat-based billing, uh, obviously, as we'll look at, is that you can simplify things for the billing department. Uh, internally. Uh, currently, the way that we deliver managed print services, we have very complex uh, billing mechanisms, both for us internally and for the customer to go through, you know, at the end of the cycle. And I've uh, done many assessments where we've gone back and found errors in billing, um, and customers actually, you know, want to go back and get rectification for that billing if it's in their favor. And, you know, that's obviously a, a continuing, um, you know, headache that we deal with as dealerships when we're dealing with cost per page. The other thing that a seat-based uh, billing program allows us to do is to start thinking about how we can layer additional revenue on that seat. And when I say layering additional revenue on the seat, once we're starting to look at a person versus just the uh, physical device that they're printing to, it opens up a world of things within that office that we can actually start layering into our, into our billing process, different offerings. Um, Seat-based billing also allows us recurring revenue for all of our offerings. So as you'll see when we go through the presentation, looking at different components that we can roll into the seat, uh, that we can actually start to use uh, traditional sort of one-time sale items um, as uh, recurring revenue elements. And the other uh, great thing, and this is a dealer brought this up for me, it's something I hadn't even considered uh, until the last roundtable that I had, was that we get uh, the money for our services up front under a seat-based billing program. So um, software as a service programs uh, and other things, you don't actually get to enjoy the service until you pay your first month's uh, bill, and seat-based billing allows us to do that, uh, which means that we're not, you know, outlaying capital uh, in the hope of re-cooping you know, cooping that at the end of the month. So another great benefit. So if we're in agreement that pages are in a slight decline, the question is, is why? What's happening in the world today that's different, you know, than when managed print services first started? Uh, when I first started in the managed print um, service space, people were um, pretty convinced that uh, the internet technologies were actually going to increase page volumes, and for a long time they did. And when we uh, first started having access to computers to share information, the big difference was that they were tethered to a desk. So everyone had a desktop computer, and if you wanted uh, to share some information or to take it home and review it, typically you had to print that off and put it in your briefcase. and you know, take it home to review. Of course, those things have changed with all of the screen-based technologies that exist now. Um, smartphones and tablets have started to dominate the market space, and people are using these devices now to uh, peruse and edit uh, documents like never before. The other thing that we've seen is uh, that millennials, um, which is a new uh, group of people entering the workforce that were born in the digital age, um, people like myself and probably like yourselves, remember a time when there was no internet, uh, remember a time when there was no such thing as 
uh, personal computers. I can still remember being in school working with the first Apple IIc uh, that they brought in, and some of you may have uh, remembered working with some of the older you know, devices even before that. So uh, these millennials have never known a day uh, when a screen didn't exist. So the way that they approach workflow and the way that they approach uh, sharing of information is much different than we do today. Uh, my son, you know, he, he prints nothing uh, anymore. And when I asked him, I said, why don't you, you know, print uh, things to be able to look at? And he paused for a second and he looked at me and his response was, because paper is too slow. And so there is a key difference between these types of people and they're going to have an impact on, you know, what kind of page volumes we look at. The other thing is, uh, workflow software has been introduced into the marketplace now and I would say progressively in the last three to five years becoming viable options for helping people to do things in different ways. If anyone's received a UPS or a FedEx shipment in the last couple of years, um, every single time the guy comes to your door there's not a piece of paper to sign. He actually has a small handheld device in which you sign and their whole process uh, now for logistics uh, is paperless. And we're starting to see a lot of that trickle down into you know, other industries and other areas. But the other thing is uh, flat overall economic growth uh, could be a reason for that as well. Um, you know, certainly we have recovered in the economy, um, but growth has not been gangbusters. And without new people, we don't get new pages. So we see a flat line on you know, new pages for, for new hires as well. Um, to get good alignment, the you know, the idea is can we bill in a way uh, for the customer that benefits us and also benefits the customer. And the really cool thing about uh, billing in a seat-based fashion is that it allows us to make um, less revenue per account, but actually we can increase our gross profit. In other words, the amount of money that we get to keep from that account after all is said and done and paid for um, is actually more, uh, even though the revenue uh, will decrease. So. I call this a win-win because obviously the customer is spending less and you as a managed print provider will actually be making more. And that might sound like magic right now, but uh, as we go through the calculations further in the presentation, you'll see that it's actually quite a simple you know, equation. And so the model allows us to have better alignment with our you know, customers than we currently do today. Uh, the calculator that I'm going to take you through later, um, certainly feel free to uh, email us and reach out um, to ask how you can get your hands on a copy of it. Uh, or um, the presentation will be uh, recorded and shared on YouTube. So if you want to go back to that and try and come up with your own calculator, by all means. Uh, but we've created one uh, to make it easy um, so that you can actually see and build a seat-based price that's profitable and works for your you know, customer base. Now, one of the, the big things that I hear, and believe me, it's nothing new. Um, when we first started doing managed print services back in the day, a lot of the same arguments and concerns that are coming up for seat-based billing uh, happened uh, in the early days of managed print services. And so one of the you know, concerns is that there's a big range in uh, user spend. And that certainly is true. If you look at these numbers from Flatizo, that basically, um, for a user, their print spend can be anywhere from $15 to $24 uh, per MPS user per month. And that's a pretty big range. Um, so certainly the one thing you can't do is consider doing just a one price fits all. And we've experienced that in the cost per page world as well. Um, every uh, time I've gone to a dealership, uh, the sales rep's first you know, request is, can you help us to come up with a unified billing you know, mechanism so we can just go out and quote on this? And the answer has been for 14 years, uh, no, we can't do that because each customer environment is different. And that certainly doesn't change uh, with the seat-based billing model. There's still going to be variances in how people print and, and what the, the cost is for that. So <clears throat> because we've got this big range in you know, user spend, how do we mitigate it? And obviously, the first place that you want to go to is the only way you can tackle the problem is if you have good information on it. And living in the age of big data and uh, data analytics um, and tool sets that give you the ability to look at how users are printing and what they're printing and what their behavior looks like, that's got to be step one, making sure that we actually start to look at not just the, the physical printer's behavior in the environment, but the user's print behavior. Um, and the only way we can do that is using some kind of uh, print governance software. And obviously at PrintAudit, uh, we're pretty proud of PrintAudit 6. 
and uh, the ability to uh, both analyze, apply rules, and to recover different cost elements um, using software that is based on users, not just on uh, devices. The, the big concern that a lot of uh, uh, dealers brought up when we were at the Navigator show was that people are going to print color like crazy. In other words, once you give them the ability to have a price that doesn't rely on uh, page costs, that it's somehow a natural delimitator for you know, them to print less color. But the truth is, um, uh, from what we've seen in the marketplace and from what I've seen from doing six years of assessments, is that customers are already printing um, you know, kind of everything that they want to. Now, of course, you can still go in and incorporate some user-based print governance rules uh, with products like Print Audit 6, which do a great job of making sure that certain elements of uh, potential threat for color printing are eliminated. And one of the things that we do every day for our, uh, uh, for our partners is to help actually incorporate rules for color printing. A couple of good examples are email and web print. Uh, most customers could care less um, if you know, a document actually printed out a blue hyperlink and a, and a logo. And they could care less uh, if uh, you know, the web document they're printing for directions or whatever was in black and white or color. So print governance tool sets like uh, we provide a print audit will actually allow you to control you know, those cost elements. Um, the other thing is contract caveats. And I can remember in the early days of managed print when we were doing cost per page, one of the big concerns was um, coverage. People were terrified of page coverage. And we still get asked that question all the time today. You know, um, how accurate is your you know, page coverage uh, metrics and measurements for, you know, for printing? But the truth of the matter is uh, managed print uh, contracts remain very healthy and that um, coverage um, uh, rates for both color and monochrome across the board um, have remained fairly predictable. In other words, um, cost per page um, you know, contracts have remained profitable uh, even though there was a perceived risk of too much toner going on the page. Of course, we knew the same thing in a seat-based uh, contract. All we have to do is make sure that uh, we base the contract on, you know, the actual study that we've done up front and limit the color volumes, um, you know, to a, to a certain realistic level. Now, in most cases, that means that they'll never see an additional price increase or, or change to their bill. A good example is uh, internet service. We all use internet service, and I can remember the days. I actually worked for a company called... Uh, PSINet in the very early days of corporate internet, uh, trying to sell this this mysterious uh, internet service to companies before it was actually done. And in those days, we we build everything by usage. And nowadays, everything's included in a flat fee for uh, quote unquote virtually unlimited usage. And if you take a fine look at your contract, um, I just looked at mine the other day, is that even though it's unlimited. Um, the fine print tells me that I have 500 gigs, and if I surpass 500 gigs of usage, that the internet service provider reserves the right to revisit my billing, and that's never happened. And for most people, it never would. Um, so, you know, the seat-based price would remain, you know, static based on that model. The other thing is um, to make sure that you do put a contract caveat in for uh, the right to revisit the seat price should the color behavior increase um, dramatically. And again, if you're incorporating good print governance rules, especially around email and uh, web print, um, there's actually an opportunity there to make more margin and not make less money because of increased uh, color printing. And we'll get to that a bit, a little bit later. Another risk uh, that was brought up by dealers um, is um, just volume overages and abuse. In other words, if you have the ability to uh, print in a flat rate model, and it doesn't, it's not dependent on uh, how many pages that you're doing, then why not print everything? And most customers that I've spoken with doing assessments over the last six years have all said categorically that, you know, the bar has already been open. In other words, their print behavior was never mitigated by uh, cost per page. They never really paid attention to it, that people were printing uh, the way that they wanted to anyway. And most of them uh, didn't have any mechanisms in place for color control or uh, waste pages or other things. So the truth of the matter is for most customers today, they're already printing, you know, the way that they want to and a seat based price is not going to, you know, change that behavior. And again, uh, what we can do is make sure that we do put in some upper limits on uh, volumes as well. So a contract caveat around 
uh, the volumes that have been done during the uh, study <coughs> and making sure that they understand that if those volumes are exceeded by a certain percent, whatever you build into the contract, that you reserve the right to you know, revisit that price. So again, just good common uh, contract sense to make sure that you're covered in those areas. Um, really make sure that these are in there. Most uh, dealers that I work with uh, today in the managed print space do have these caveats built into their contracts and it's certainly good practice to make sure that you know you do this as well for any seat-based program. Another concern that was raised was well how do I track users? How do I make sure that if they you know um, hire another 20 people that I'm actually you know getting this so I can charge for it? And of course there are ways to do that, but you can't do it simply with, you know, device-focused uh, uh, monitoring platforms, and that you do have to have some kind of user-based platform in place to be able to get that. So if you are using software like printout of rules and accounting from the PA6 suite, um, you will have the ability to track users as they're added to the system. In other words, every time someone hits the, you know, print button for the first time and they're tracked, we'll get their uh, information so that you'll be able to update um, you know, the number of users that are being billed in that account uh, simply by using software like ours. Um, Active Directory reports are another method that some people use, but it's kind of one of those things where I say buyer beware, because most Active Directory um, listings are um, hugely out of date. In other words, there are potentially um, records in there that shouldn't be there and records that haven't been added, you know, since, right? So it really, you're really dependent on the customer to being a, do a good job of managing their Active Directory reports, which I certainly wouldn't rely on. So again, using software like ours, which does monitor and manage user print behavior, is an easy way to make sure that you can, you know, uh, keep track of the number of users that you should be billing for. Um, device monitoring software obviously is not enough, and as I've said uh, throughout this, that we must understand user print behavior. If we are going to move to a seat-based platform, uh, seat translates in many cases to user, and then we have to be able to understand what they're doing and how they're, you know, doing it, right? Um, the simple things that we've been monitoring, like toner levels and page volumes, um, aren't really enough in a, a seat-based world. So obviously with software uh, like that provided by Print Audit, which we're very proud of, uh, for rules and accounting, embedded and secure, uh, these will make sure that your seat-based program uh, is functional and, most importantly, uh, profitable. What I have here are some examples actually from a new product um, that um, Print Audit has introduced, which is called Insight. And Insight is basically data analytics and big data analysis uh, based on user print behavior. And all of our premier members have access to this. And what it does is it runs a dashboard view <coughs> of user print behavior in the environment. So we can see from this example taken right out of the reporting engine that in this particular assessment, there are 7,100 uh, users and that each user on average is printing about 373 you know, pages for the 30-day uh, period. And it also lists the top 10 users, so we can start looking at you know, who are the big uh, print abusers or the, you know, the people that are printing the most volume within that account, so we can really focus on you know, their workflow and, and be able to help them out. Another view that we uh, get is looking at, once we understand uh, who those people are that are printing those volumes, what are the top 10 applications by page volume? And you can see here that the number one um, um, uh, printing uh, application is Internet Explorer, so that they are printing from you know, the web, uh, followed by you know, uh, Adobe, um, WinWord, uh, email, and Excel, and so on. And this is really important because as we start to build our uh, seat-based price, we want to understand what kind of areas we can look to further help them to you know, control and measure. Probably the biggest reason to move to a seat-based program is the same reason we moved to cost per page in the first place, and that was to be able to get uh, some kind of recurring contracted revenue uh, for pages. And today we've done a pretty good job of doing that for toner and related services, um, but we still, for some reason, sell outright certain elements of the program uh, to the end user, such as the software and the hardware. And as you look at this model, uh, you can see that basically for the same amount of uh, print spend, if you will, and uh, billable items to the customer, that under subscription uh, over a uh, three-year period, that you're looking at $376,000 in profit versus 
$54,000 in profit if you just sold, you know, the same level of MPS services to them outright. And that's pretty important to understand because under your subscription program, it allows you to make much more profit, you know, over the long haul. Um, obviously, to build a seat-based price, there's no reason to completely reinvent the wheel and that you're going to get a lot of good information, uh, which is going to be gathered from your device-centric management system, okay? So if you're using a product like Facilities Manager, that you will still be gathering metrics on volumes and stuff uh, from that. Um, what you're going to add in addition is the user-centric information that we've talked about. So we can start to look at the total number of users because we have to understand how many we can bill for. Uh, the pages per month, which are split into color and monochrome per user, and by which applications, because there is the ability for us to migrate pages from uh, color to monochrome. And as you'll see, in a seat-based program, we want to start introducing as many efficiencies as possible because now, instead of being a revenue loss, it's actually going to contribute to our gross profit. And here's how we would look at that. Um, today under a cost per page program, any of these decreases lead to a direct decrease in revenue, which doesn't make anybody happy at the MPS dealership. Now the customer uh, wants to see this kind of stuff because it means they're spending less, but again, because we're misaligned, we don't necessarily want to deliver these kind of values to them today. Under a seat-based program, that changes. So as we start to look at the amount of email and web print in that environment, and we can see here that in this particular study, 30% of the total color volume uh, came from email and 20% came from web print. What that tells me is I've got 50% of the, the total color volume in that account, which I can actually convert to monochrome. And under a seat-based program, once I've delivered the pricing schedule to the customer, any efficiencies I introduce are going right to my profit line. And that's a, a critical distinction and another reason why I'd want to start looking at this as an option. Um, some other areas that we can look at for control. High cost pages to low cost devices. So one of the things that we see when we do print studies, especially when we can start looking at the user behavior, is which devices they're printing to and for what kind of volumes. And we have studies on that. We have other presentations which show you just um, how much people are printing uh, on high cost devices when they should be putting them to lower cost devices for, you know, say 50 page print jobs or above and that they're not doing those things. And uh, print governance software like Print Audit 6 allow you to be able to control which devices those go to based on parameters. Color to monochrome, which we talked about on the previous page, the ability to make sure that they're only printing color uh, when they should be, that a blue hyperlink is not going to, you know, drive a color page or a logo on a page or a web print. The other area that we can help a customer decrease their spend is increasing duplex. And uh, over the years, for all of the studies that I've done, uh, all of the print studies, uh, most dealerships are not um, um, actually providing paper um, in their program. They're, you know, sort of letting that happen from some of the office stationers. But nonetheless, it's really important to show the customer how much you can save them uh, through increasing duplex because for them, it's a very real spend. And in the studies I've done, it's anywhere from seven-tenths of a cent to eight-tenths of a cent per page for that physical paper medium. So it's, you know, if we help them to reduce uh, the amount of simplex printing they're doing and increase their duplex, then we deserve credit for sharing those savings with them. We should certainly show them what they are. Uh, the other thing is with secure release printing and embedded solutions like we have for the multifunction devices, that you can really decrease the amount of waste and abandoned pages that occur in an environment. And in most cases, when you introduce some kind of print governance or secure release platform, uh, customers will enjoy um, a decrease in total pages from anywhere from 20 to 30 percent uh, volumes, and I've in some cases seen higher. Again, in a cost per page world, um, a dealer may not like that, but in a seat-based billing world, uh, that now becomes your friend because it actually helps contribute those savings back towards your, you know, your profit line. Um, and as I mentioned before, why reinvent the wheel? A lot of the things that we can include in our um, seat-based model are going to be the same things that you charge for today. So toner and other consumables, such as maintenance kits, uh, you know, the service uh, that goes into keeping the health uh, of the fleets and making sure that we meet our SLAs uh, for all of the parts that are required to keep, you know, the equipment running uh, under the MPS program. And um, oftentimes the meter and toner management software, which is included, you know, within the, uh, you know, the cost per page quote. 
what we can also do now is because we've gotten so good at doing cost per page, uh, so we can actually do a lot of our cost analysis from looking at the existing cost per page rates. And doing the study, looking at the historical print behavior, and again, the same things we do typically in an assessment today, uh, which is monitoring their environment for a fixed period of time and uh, getting their contracts for multifunctions that have been under contract for you know historical period, um, and looking at rules and control. And probably the most important thing is killing any assumptions. And this becomes really important in a seat-based uh, program. Whenever we do an assessment for a customer today, uh, the one thing that they do demand is uh, to get rid of as many assumptions as possible so they can buy into our data on how we're going to save them money. This becomes really important now in a seat-based program as well because it's going to help us ensure that the profit we think we're getting is actually the profit we're going to get. So what we've done is we've actually built a seat-based uh, billing savings calculator which will allow you to fine-tune where savings are going to come from. And again, because we're building this into a seat-based model, this contributes directly to the profitability of your, of your deal. So I'm going to take you through an example of one that we did build through the print audit um, seat-based billing calculator. And you can certainly get in touch with us to learn more about how you can get access to it. Uh, or feel free to look at the example and try and come up with your own calculator as well. Now, one of the first things we have to do when we're looking at, um, you know, this uh, environment for billing is, is actually breaking the cost into user metrics. So you can see some pretty familiar metrics uh, in the yellow cells. That's uh, wherever you see a yellow cell is where you can actually input information. And in this case, we can see that there's 150 employees, the number of devices they have in the office, how much uh, monthly print per employee. So now things are starting to change. It's not per device, it's per employee. What the average cost is uh, currently for the cost per page in that environment, and um, what our actual um, profit is in that environment. As we move through that, we can see the revenue that we make per account. And what's different now is we actually see how much uh, revenue per user uh, we're actually making. And that's important um, because in this case, we're currently making $16.50 per user in the account. And the gross profit we're making per user is $4.75. Now, one of the things that we do with print governance software is it allows us to have um, actual control of what kinds of things are being printed and when things shouldn't be printed at all. So again, uh, with the introduction of embedded solutions, that are offered through Print Audit 6 uh, as well as secure release solutions, you can see a waste reduction of 30%. And that's what we put in here. It's actually reduced the volumes by 30% in the account. And we're going to take 25% of that color volume that's being printed in email and web print, and we're going to convert that to black and white. Now, if I do that, here's the bad news part of the story so far. If I was just under a cost per page program, I would actually be losing $1.69 in gross profit per user. And that's not a very good thing. So in our cost per page model, um, trying to help a customer this way only leads to a loss in, in revenue. But of course, the story gets uh, better than just that. <clears throat> when we're offering print governance tools, we charge for those. And we can actually build those into the seat price. And as you can see, based on the Print Audit 6 software, when we charge for rules, accounting, secure, and embedded, is that the, the pricing is actually pretty nominal, pretty small, uh, compared to the overall spend in the deal but it contributes a great deal of gross profit to our deal. So you can see here that by introducing these rules that allow them to actually do the reduced volume and allow them to convert color to monochrome, that we're making $2, uh, roughly $2.02 per user in GP per month. And that's important because if I go back now, I can see that I've actually superseded my loss. When I look at my net gross profit loss per user, uh, by doing the right thing, by helping them to print color only when they should, and by uh, reducing waste, I've lost $1.69 per user. But by incorporating uh, the software for print governance into the deal, I'm actually making $2.02. .02. So I'm actually ahead of the game. And let's look at that for a second. Uh, I mentioned alignment earlier on in the presentation, saying that the customer is going to spend less, uh, so that means we're going to make less revenue, yet as a dealership, we're going to make more money. And here's where you can see how that happens. So when we did the assessment for this customer, uh, the, the print spend uh, per year was $29,700. And we reduced that to $23,763 for a savings of almost six grand, and almost 20%. And that seems to be kind of the magic area where customers really start paying attention to savings is around that 20% point, right? 
So the customer's happy. We've saved them 20%, and we've done very little to affect their uh, workflow. You'll notice that there was no talk of a device consolidation or anything else in that model. There's lots of other areas that you can you know, go after as well. This was strictly on helping them do a better job of working with their user uh, workflow for print. Now, what that does for us as a dealership is that we can see our GP per user is $5.08. We've actually increased our gross profit per user by 0.33 of a dollar, and that means that our gross profit increase is 6.5%. So that's good news. Less revenue, uh, but the money that we get to take home is actually improved. So if we start looking at other areas that we can help customers with, uh, within to become more efficient, we can share some of those savings with them, um, but of course we keep some of those back for being able to deliver those valuable services. So why stop there? Um, obviously for all of our dealerships, we are uh, very strong in the managed print services game. And I would argue that we all started doing different things. I can remember when I first started in managed print that there was a very clear distinction between those that sold uh, copiers and multifunction devices and those uh, dealerships that actually just serviced existing printer infrastructure. That I, I would go into the same office with a sales rep from Xerox and a sales rep from HP and everyone would be happy together in the account because they did, you know, they sold different parts of the business. Well, over 14 years that has changed dramatically and most managed print providers offer both multifunction devices under contract as well as servicing of, you know, the printers in the account. So we have changed, we've added you know, different services to our portfolio to stay competitive and to make more money. So once we start doing a seat-based price, why can't we look at other things? Why can't we look at layering document management software into the deal? Why not look at different workflow software that actually helps the customer to improve their sort of digital footprint? Why not offer managed IT services, either through our own offering or through partnership? And how about cloud services, being able to offer them business-grade uh, cloud storage services? And as we start to progress in the next five years, I think we're going to see a lot more Internet of Things, uh, such as HVAC and lighting, which are all going to be IP-connected devices, in which we can help manage uh, for customers to help improve cost and efficiencies there, just like we do today with, uh, with printers and multifunction. Coffee and water services, digital signage and display, and what else? The point is that once we start focusing on the user, once we start billing in a seat-based fashion, that we can start to go back to the customer and come up with ways to be able to uh, help them uh, become more efficient uh, in other areas. And what this allows us to do, we all know uh, in sales that it's much easier to go after existing customers to try and get additional revenue than it is to get net new logos. And what this allows us to do now is to be able to grow our share of the customer wallet because believe me, the spend uh, for other things in the office is much more than they are spending on managed print. And quarterly reviews now become a process for us to be able to introduce new opportunities. In other words, not only are we going to show them what we've done for them in managed print, but we're going to introduce new ideas, new things that we can do for them, new revenue streams for us to be able to help them, you know, as their uh, business grows into the future. So that's all I have today on this. Um, hopefully what you can see is that by going to a seat-based billing platform is that you can really introduce an alignment with your customer like never before. Um, customer obviously saves money, they, they don't spend as much as they used to on print, and yet we make more profit. So that's a good alignment. Uh, both of our interests are, you know, happening uh, lockstep. It doesn't really get much better than that. So what next? Um, I encourage you to reach out to us and download the uh, seat-based billing primer. We've actually built a document uh, which has much more detail than the presentation we've given today, uh, which you can get in uh, PDF format. And I encourage you to look at this. Um, I don't uh, certainly think that seat-based billing is going to change the world overnight, um, but I would certainly say that it's good to understand it and to start looking at the elements of it um, so that it, as it does start to gain more traction in the marketplace, that you're not catching up, uh, that you're well aware of, the kinds of things that you should be doing to move into that arena. Even if you don't do that today, to at least understand how it works. The other thing I would encourage you to do is to request uh, a demo of the new Insight product that we have, which actually combines uh, device data, user data, and document data in one single um, uh, dashboard. And it's a drillable dashboard in which you can actually you know, um, find out more uh, information on certain areas uh, simply with the click of a mouse. Um, and certainly feel free to reach out to us to learn more. 
So without further ado, I'm going to introduce Angela Einstein in our marketing department, and she's going to take over the question period um, as we start to move through some of the questions that you've asked today. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, West. Uh, thank you guys for joining us. Uh, looks like right now we only have one question, so I do encourage uh, anyone out there that has questions to please post them in the question panel. But uh, our question is, can we get this presentation at the end of the meeting? Yeah, absolutely. So one of the things that we always do is whenever we uh, deliver a presentation, we put it up in YouTube. So we'll be sharing the YouTube link uh, for the presentation for everyone that attended as well as those that could not attend uh, today. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, looks like we have one more question. What has the experience been from a customer reception on this idea? Yeah, that's a good question. And um, the only background I can give you is that I'm actually uh, part of the uh, CompTIA Managed Print community. I was the chair for uh, two years, and now I'm the uh, chair emeritus. And uh, the beauty of belonging to CompTIA is you get introduced to a lot of other you know, different market segments. So I belong also to the Managed IT Services Group and I go to the uh, uh, sessions on mobility as well because that's becoming quite a big thing in our industry. And for the managed IT services, this is the exclusive way that they are billing their um, customers uh, today for any new contracts. So customers in the managed IT services world have been exceptionally responsive to it. And if you think about it and you look at a lot of other areas where we used to pay on a usage basis, uh, such as cell phones, such as internet, where we pay a flat predictable you know, rate per month, that customers are willing to pay for that predictability of, and budgetability um, as long as it's fair because obviously competition still drives fairness in the, in the pricing. Uh, they're quite willing to pay that flat rate per month um, you know, uh, for the benefits of budgetability. So even though this is something new in the managed print services space, um, value-based billing or seat-based billing, uh, you can do some research online uh, in managed IT services. Uh, something that they've been doing for years and meeting with uh, great success with their customers. It has become the de facto you know, billing mechanism um, you know, in those other uh, verticals. So I don't see any reason why uh, the reception would be any different uh, sort of in the managed print services space. Okay, great. Thank you, West. Another question is, how can I present this to my sales staff? Yeah, um, certainly we'd love to help you out. There will be a version of the presentation um, uh, on a YouTube video, which you'll be able to uh, raise. And I encourage you, um, you know, to reach out to me uh, afterwards. Um, I can actually take you through the calculator. And anyone that, that wants to go through the calculator, I think you should actually do a live demo to see how, um, you know, it sort of constructs a seat-based uh, price. Uh, so, that, you know, between me giving you an actual personal demo for the calculator so you can learn how to use it yourself, and uh, having the uh, presentation that we've done today on YouTube uh, to be able to move through, I think should help. And again, the primer that I mentioned at the beginning, uh, you can reach out to us to download the seat-based billing primer, which is a PDF document which you can share with your sales team. Thanks, West. Uh, do you have any sample service contracts with the seat-based verbiage? Yeah, certainly uh, reach out to me and I can share some samples that I've gathered from the managed IT services world. In the managed print space, this is still fairly new, and, and as I mentioned, it's not going to you know, take over the, the world in the next year or two. Uh, but I have no idea how quick traction is going to be once it gets started. Uh, but I can tell you that a lot of the dealers that I'm currently working with that are offering both managed print services and managed IT services are already currently engaged in uh, seat-based billing with their customers. So it's out there. Uh, we have customers that are actually doing it. And uh, as far as the contracts are concerned, I can't share theirs with you, but I would certainly you know, be willing to share some managed IT services contracts with you for seat-based billing. Great, thank you. Uh, here's a good one. Some of us are dealers, uh, some of us as dealers, are just getting into MPS. Would you recommend that we skip that step and go directly into seat-based billing? Well, there's the $30 million question. Um, certainly, you know, what I have heard, and I'm not trying to be insulting, but a lot of people have said if you're just getting into managed print services, um, it's too late. And what they really mean by that is that the competition uh, for cost per page uh, in environments is already sort of a, at a frenetic, you know, level. Um, and, um, you know, the caveat after is I'm not going to tell you how to run your business, but I would certainly say that you should be looking for uh, being able to reach your customer in new and unique ways. 
Um, there's an analogy which you can look up online, which is called the purple cow. And essentially, a purple cow is something that is only slightly different from your um, competitors, but delivers a world um, of difference in your win rates. And you can look up the purple cow analogy. Um, so certainly, if you're just getting into managed print services, um, you know, are you going to get into um, the cost per page game, or are you going to start fresh from you know, a seat base, and if it was me doing it, I would probably start looking at being able to offer both. In other words, nothing precludes you from having two billing models depending on, you know, how your customer wants to buy, right? So uh, once you've built a uh, cost per page uh, rate, um, it's not difficult to build a seat-based, you know, offering around that and figure out, you know, what your uh, customer's preferred element is going to be. Thank you, West. Will Print.net help with positioning this if we are a premier dealer? Uh, we will certainly help you. That's one of the beauties of the premier program is that all of our members um, get uh, unlimited support from us internally. Uh, so certainly as a premier member, we will dedicate as much time as is required to make sure that you can actually make full use of the calculator and build your own you know, seat-based price, certainly. Uh, can you provide us with a link for the purple cow? <laughs> yep. Uh, what I'll be sure to do is uh, we'll send out an email to all attendees, and I'll send you some uh, good information on the purple cow analogy with that as well. Thank you. It looks like our last question here. Uh, actually, sorry. No. Uh, is there a cost associated with util utilizing the new Insight software? Um, well, no, not for premier members. And uh, the way Print Audit operates is that all of our premier members get um, exclusive access to all of our offerings. So if it's Facilities Manager, if it's Print Audit 6, if it's our Embedded Solutions, our Secure Solutions, and Insight are all included in our uh, members' uh, monthly subscription rate. So there's no additional uh, charge for that. Um, if you're not a premier member, then obviously um, you can't get access to it. But for all of our premier members, uh, membership has its privileges and it's included. Uh, how do we become a premier member? Uh, certainly feel free to reach out uh, to myself uh, or to uh, our sales department who would be very happy to help you out. Uh, my email is listed in the slide there and I'll make sure you get in touch with the right people uh, to learn more about the premier offering for sure. Great, thank you. How do we get access to the seat-based billing calculator? Uh, the seat-based uh, calculator is something that we've, again, built for our premier members. Um, you cannot get a copy of it, but like I said, I'm quite willing to take you through a demonstration of the calculator um, if you choose to make one of your own. Um, if you're a premier member, uh, then you will get access to that. So either way, we'll make sure you understand how to either use the one that we've developed as a premier member, uh, or if you're a non-premier member, we can certainly help you understand the elements to build your own. Thank you. Is Insight only available to North American customers? Uh, currently, Insight is available just to uh, North American customers, but we are working uh, with our international partners uh, to make that available uh, internationally as well, so stay tuned for that. Great. Thank you. That looks like all the questions that we have for now. Wonderful. Well, again, I want to thank everyone for uh, taking the time to uh, sit down and learn a little bit more about seat-based billing and its potential fit for your managed print practice. And we certainly look forward to you reaching out to us uh, for any uh, additional questions that you might have and to be able to help you get started. So thank you very much, everyone, and make sure you have a fantastic afternoon. Goodbye.